On a winter night across the Great Plains, the cold does not just touch your skin, it cuts straight through you. The air sits heavy at ten degrees below zero, the kind of cold that steals your breath the moment you step outside. The wind rushes across the open land with a sound that feels almost alive, and the snow under your boots breaks with a sharp crack. In a world without furnaces, or insulated walls or double-pane windows, this kind of cold is not just uncomfortable, it is dangerous. Yet for generations, whole families stepped into the deep winter inside an earth lodge and found warmth, comfort, and safety. While the world outside froze, the space inside often reached 50 or even 60 degrees. That contrast almost feels impossible. How could a shelter made of timber, earth, and grass do what even a canvas tent with a modern stove struggles to achieve? How did people without electricity or hardware stores or engineered insulation keep their homes warm through some of the coldest nights on the continent? The answer is both simple and astonishing. It was not luck. It was knowledge. It was design. It was engineering shaped by observation, trial, and generations of living with the land. In this story, we are going to explore how five core principles turned the Earth Lodge into a natural version of what we now call a passive house. These ideas are not just clever survival tricks. They reveal a way of thinking that speaks to our modern world, and they lead us into the first secret behind this remarkable warmth. To understand why the Earth Lodge was such a powerful winter shelter, we first need to see it as more than a house. It was an entire system designed for the brutal seasons of the Northern Plains. Imagine an enormous circular structure, often stretching close to 40 feet across, rising gently from the landscape like a mound shaped by human hands. The walls were not thin or fragile. They were built several feet thick made from strong timber supports layered with dense mats of grass and packed earth. When you step inside, you immediately feel the difference compared to a canvas tent or even a modern cabin. A teepee, for example, was built for mobility. Families could take it down, follow the hunt, and set it up within hours. It was light, adaptable, and perfect for the open plains when travel mattered more than insulation but a tippy could not hold heat for long. It relied on constant fire and constant adjustment of the smoke flaps. The earth lodge, on the other hand, was never meant to move. It was a winter stronghold, a permanent shelter shaped specifically to outlast long stretches of cold. Its layout centered around a large room with a fire pit in the middle and sleeping platforms built along the circular walls. Every layer of material, from the timber frame to the grass thatch, to the packed soil, contributed to stability, insulation, and heat retention. Modern architects use the term earth-sheltered design to describe structures that use the mass of the ground itself to resist cold and reduce heating needs. Studies on these designs show that when walls and roofs are encased in earth, heating demands can drop dramatically, sometimes by as much as 80%. The Earth Lodge applied this principle centuries before engineers gave it a name. It did not need store-bought insulation. It used the land itself as protection. What looked like a simple mound from the outside was actually a carefully balanced combination of materials that worked together to trap warmth and shield families from the freezing winds. And this takes us directly to the first secret behind its remarkable performance, the thermal mass hidden inside those thick walls. The first secret behind the warmth of the Earth Lodge lies in the quiet power of its walls because those thick earthen walls did far more than block the wind. They acted like giant storage batteries for heat, a natural form of thermal mass that modern engineers still rely on in passive houses. During the daylight hours, even in winter, the sun cast enough energy onto the outer surface of the lodge to begin warming the soil and grass layers. Inside, the steady glow of the central fire added another source of heat, slowly soaking into the dense material surrounding the room. The magic happened at night, when the temperature outside dropped far below freezing and the wind swept across the plains. The walls released the heat they had stored, smoothing out the extreme swings in temperature. Studies on earth-sheltered buildings show that when walls and roofs are wrapped in soil several feet thick, heating demands can fall dramatically, 
sometimes by as much as 80%. This is the result of what is called thermal lag, the delay between when a material absorbs heat and when it releases it. In a modern concrete or masonry home, thermal lag helps stabilize indoor temperatures. In the earth lodge, timber, grass, and compacted earth achieve the same effect without a single manufactured component. Think of the contrast with a canvas tent on frozen ground. The moment the fire dies, the cold rushes in. There is nothing to hold heat, nowhere for warmth to settle. But inside an earth lodge, the heat did not vanish. It stayed locked in those thick walls, radiating gently long after the flames burned low. Children could sleep without shivering, elders could rest comfortably, and families could gather close to the fire without the constant fear of the cold pressing in. The earth lodge turned the land itself into a partner in survival, a living shield against the winter. And once the walls were working with the fire instead of against it, the next part of the design came into play, the remarkable airflow system created by the central fire pit and the smoke hole above. With the walls storing and releasing heat like a natural battery, the next challenge was controlling the air itself, because warmth means little if smoke fills the room or if every draft pulls the heat away. This is where the design of the central fire pit and the smoke hole above it showed an intelligence far ahead of its time. At first glance, the setup looks simple, a shallow pit in the center of the floor with a circular opening high in the roof. But the way these two features worked together created a system that managed airflow with surprising precision. The fire pit was set slightly lower than the main floor, creating a stable burn and reducing the chaotic drafts that often disrupt open fires. Warm air rose naturally, carrying smoke upward toward the opening above, while the heavy earth layered into the roof slowed the upward pull so the heat did not escape with it. This balance between rising heat and controlled ventilation is the foundation of passive airflow design, the same principle used in homes that rely on natural circulation rather than powered fans. In nature, similar systems appear in termite mounds, which use differences in temperature between day and night to move air through complex tunnels. The earth lodge achieved a comparable effect with nothing more than timber, grass, and packed soil. Anyone who has tried to sit beside a fire in a canvas tent knows the struggle. Too much ventilation and all the warmth disappears. Too little ventilation and smoke chokes the air. But inside the earth lodge, families could maintain a steady fire without losing heat or breathing in heavy smoke. Clean air flowed upward and outward while warm air remained in the living space, turning the fire into a dependable source of comfort rather than a constant battle. Once the airflow was balanced and the central fire could do its work, the next piece of the design helped protect the people inside from the cold creeping up from the ground itself. The raised sleeping platforms that lifted every sleeper into the warmest layer of air. With the air moving cleanly through the lodge and the fire working in harmony with the roof above it, the next challenge was something far more subtle. The cold that rises from the ground itself. Anyone who has spent a night in a canvas tent during winter knows this problem well. No matter how warm your sleeping bag is, the cold begins at the floor, slowly soaking through layers of fabric until it settles into your bones. In survival training, people learn that the ground can drain heat from the body faster than the air around it, a phenomenon confirmed by studies, showing that cold soil often acts as a massive heat sink. The builders of the earth lodge knew this through experience, long before modern research put numbers to it. Their solution was both simple and brilliant. Around the circular walls of the lodge, they built raised sleeping platforms, often two to three feet above the floor. These platforms were lined with mats of grass, woven reeds, and layers of animal hide, each creating tiny pockets of still air that acted as natural insulation. By lifting themselves above the cold sink at ground level, families slept in the warmest band of air, the layer that sat closest to the central fire. This principle mirrors what modern campers try to recreate with insulated sleeping pads or raised cots, but the earth lodge built it directly into the structure, making it part of daily life rather than a piece of gear. The effect was dramatic. When the temperatures outside fell to 10 or 20 degrees below zero, the people inside rested in a zone where warmth naturally gathered. Instead of fighting the cold all night, they slept in comfort, 
protected by design rather than by effort, and because the platforms doubled as seating and storage, the lodge became both practical and warm, a space shaped for living instead of merely surviving. With the ground cold defeated and the air warmed in layers, there was still one more crucial part of the earth lodge that sealed the heat in place, the roof system built with a careful arrangement of natural insulation. With the cold rising from the ground under control, the final barrier between a family and the harsh winter sky was the roof, and the people who built the earth lodge understood that the ceiling above them needed to do far more than keep out snow and rain. It had to hold precious warmth in place. To achieve that, they created a layered system of insulation that modern builders would immediately recognize. Massive timber beams formed the core of the structure, each one angled upward from the circle of the wall toward a central opening at the top. Across these beams, the builders laid smaller poles, creating a dense network that could carry both weight and warmth. Over this framework, they added thick mats of dried grass and reeds, packed together to trap pockets of still air. Then came the most important layer of all, a heavy blanket of earth pressed firmly across the entire roof. This mixture of soil and plant material functioned as a natural insulation system, slowing down the escape of warm air rising from the central fire. Modern studies on thermal design show that combining thermal mass with layers of insulation greatly increases energy efficiency and that the position of these layers matters. The Earth Lodge builders had no textbooks or terminology for this, yet they placed each layer exactly where it needed to be with insulating material on top of structural mass so that the heat remained stable inside. And in the coldest months, families often added another layer by hanging animal hides along the interior ceiling or stretching them across the exterior. These hides acted like the extra shell of a sleeping bag, adding another barrier against convection and wind. The result was a roof that performed like a natural version of a modern multi-layer insulation system, crafted entirely from materials gathered on the land. When storms howled across the plains and snow piled in deep drifts, the earth lodge stood firm, warm, and resilient. The roof was not just a cover, it was the final shield that locked warmth in from above. And with this shield in place, one more element of the design worked quietly to keep the lodge comfortable, the way the door itself controlled the movement of air and the direction of the wind. With the walls storing heat, the fire circulating air, the sleeping platforms lifting families into warmth, and the layered roof sealing everything from above, there was still one final piece of engineering that quietly shaped the atmosphere inside the earth lodge. It was the doorway. At first, a door might seem like an ordinary detail, simply an opening cut for people to enter and leave. But in a winter shelter, the doorway can be the difference between holding warmth or losing it, and the people who built these lodges understood that better than most modern campers. They designed the entrance deliberately low, sometimes so low that a person had to crouch or crawl to get inside. This was not an inconvenience. It was a survival strategy. Cold air is heavier than warm air, and when it enters a room, it settles quickly to the floor. By keeping the doorway low, incoming cold air dropped immediately into a small pocket near the ground instead of spilling onto the raised platforms where families slept. Modern winter shelters use a similar idea carving cold sinks into snow caves to trap the heaviest air away from the sleeping ledges. The earth lodge builders reached the same conclusion through generations of observation. They also oriented the doorway carefully, usually facing south, away from the punishing north winds that sweep across the plains. Researchers in passive design have shown that south-facing entries receive more winter sunlight and far less exposure to freezing wind, a combination that improves warmth and reduces energy loss. The people who built earth lodges did not study architecture, but they understood the land, the seasons, and the sky. They placed each entrance to reduce drafts, take advantage of the sun, and create a subtle barrier that blended with the natural flow of air. Together, the low entry and the southern orientation created a simple but powerful system of draft control. Warm air rose gently toward the roof, cold air hovered near the floor, and the lodge remained stable and comfortable even when storms swept across the open plains. The doorway was the final gatekeeper of warmth, guiding the movement of air with quiet precision, 
and when all these elements worked together, the Earth Lodge became something more than a shelter. It became a complete survival system. When you step back and look at the Earth Lodge as a whole, it becomes clear that it was never just a shelter made of soil and timber. It was a complete system, an interconnected design in which every part served a purpose and every detail reinforced the others. The thick earthen walls stored heat like a natural battery. The central fire pit and smoke hole balanced airflow with a precision that kept warmth inside and smoke moving out. The raised sleeping platforms lifted families into the warmest layer of air, protecting them from the cold that gathered near the ground. The multi-layer roof sealed heat from above, using grass, poles, and earth the way modern builders use insulation and thermal mass. And the low south-facing doorway controlled the direction of the wind, guiding cold air away from the sleeping spaces. None of this was accidental. Each element was the result of generations of observation, trial, and understanding of how nature behaves. Some people today might look at an earth lodge and see only a mound of dirt, but that view misses the truth. What stood on those plains was an engineered structure, built with purpose, insight, and remarkable skill. It was a winter fortress shaped by knowledge, not by luck. And it is this system, this harmony between design and environment, that leads us into the final reflection on what the Earth Lodge truly teaches us. When we bring all of these elements together, the lesson of the Earth Lodge becomes impossible to ignore. Warmth in the dead of winter did not come from force or excess. It came from understanding. It came from working with nature rather than fighting against it. The earthen walls held the heat. The central fire and smoke hole managed airflow. The raised platforms protected people from cold sinking at their feet. The layered roof sealed warmth overhead, and the carefully placed doorway guided the wind with quiet precision. These pieces did not stand alone. They worked like gears in a single machine, each one turning in harmony with the others. In our modern world, we often reach first for more gear, more fuel, more technology. But the Earth Lodge reminds us that sometimes the smartest solutions are also the oldest. They come from patience, observation, and respect for the land. As you think about this remarkable structure, consider your own experiences. Think back to the coldest night you have ever spent outside, the moment when the cold pressed into your back or when your breath hung in the air. What would it have felt like to step into a space warmed by design rather than by struggle? And if you have ever built a shelter or faced winter with limited tools, share your story. Your experience may inspire someone else. If you are curious about how Native American tippies used airflow to stay warm and stable in winter storms, stay with us. The next story reveals how their design rivals modern tents and may change the way you think about cold weather survival.